So let's take a look at the first page of our utility stitches. This is going to be your straight stitches and your zigzag stitches. If you are on this screen, we have selected number one. All right, on the very first page, now there are five pages to this particular menu, but on the very first page, we have six different stitches. Now, stitch one and two look pretty similar. Stitch three and four look pretty similar. So let's talk about those. All four of these are straight stitches. The first two, stitches one and two, have the needle in the left-hand position, or the left side position. Stitches three and four have the needle in the center position. So that's the difference between the pairs. Now if you notice, stitches one and three, they have like these two hash marks at the top, whereas stitches two and four have the dot. The difference here is with your reinforcement or your reverse stitch. Now you can reinforce or reverse either by using this button, which does it when you push the button, or this. Now if you engage this, it's going to do it automatically. That's the difference between doing the computer screen and on here. This does it on command. This is going to do it automatically. So what is the difference between reverse and reinforcement. Stitch number one with the two hash marks engages the reverse. So if you're using stitch one and you hold down this button, it will go in reverse as long as you can go, as long as you hold the button down. If you engage this, when you start sewing, it is going to sew a few stitches in reverse. So let's have a look at what that does. So I have selected stitch number one and I have engaged the automatic reverse function and now I'm going to press on the presser foot. See it went forward a few and went backward a few and now it's going to sew all the way to the end. Now when I stop, if I press this button, it's going to automatically go backwards a few stitches and frontwards a few stitches. Okay. All right, for this one, I'm going to disengage the auto reverse, but I'm still using stitch one. So what it does now without the auto reverse, you can sew forward a few stitches. And if I hold down the reverse button, it's going to sew in reverse as long as I hold that button down. Okay, so that's stitch one. Now let's look at the two different things with stitch two. So I'm gonna select Stitch number two. First, I've got the auto reverse engaged. So when I give it some gas, it went forward a few stitches and then backwards a few stitches and then back forward again. Now I stopped it. Well, it doesn't know if you're really through with the seam or not. So it's not gonna automatically do the reverse at the end, but if you press the button, it will. Now that's the auto function. Let's trim. Now we're going to use stitch two. I'm going to disengage the auto reverse, or rather I'm getting the auto reinforcement. So this is what happens when you just use the button. If I just go forward, all right now here, on stitch two, if I hold this button down, it's just going to keep sewing in the same place. It is not going to go forward or backwards. So that is your difference between stitch one and stitch two. It's just the reverse or reinforcement choice. The same way with three and four. With the center needle position, if you choose number three, you have the option to go in reverse as far as you want to. If you choose step four, stitch four, it's going to make a reinforcement stitch. Okay. All right. Now let's go to some of the settings on your straight stitch. So let's just talk about the options that are on your screen. Now it does show you, the arrow shows you where your needle is. Since I have stitch one selected, it's going to be on the left hand side. This shows you which foot you need to be using. All right, it also shows you what the width, length, and left, right shift are set at. If you want to change those, it's that button right there in the top corner. You can change, now on a straight stitch, you're not going to get a width 
change, what this is going to do is move your needle over. Okay. Now let's look at the screen and go over what all these icons mean. Um, up here in the top left, there's a needle, and then an arrow shows you where your needle position is. Since I have stitch 101 selected, that is the needle in the left position. It shows you which foot you need to be using, foot J. All right, this icon over here in the top right lets you set your width, your length, and a left-right shift. Now, since we are using a straight stitch, a lot of these don't pertain to the stitch. If you adjust the width on a straight stitch, what that does is move your needle position over, you know, or whichever way. So it's not actually going to widen your stitch. It's just going to move your needle for this. Now, if you had a zigzag, it would make the zigzag wider or narrower. All right, your stitch length. Now, on a straight stitch, this does matter. Are you going to get little tiny stitches or are you going to get long stitches? So you can increase the plus sign or you can decrease. If millimeters are confusing to you, there is a way to go in your menu and you can change this to inches. Most sewing stuff has switched over to millimeters, so that's what I leave it at. You can get used to it. Now, a left-right shift for a straight stitch is also going to move your needle over from where it is. On a zigzag, it would move the whole zigzag over to the right or to the left. Okay, once you get something set, like if I change my stitch length to 3.5, if I want that to be the new default setting, this icon right here will fix that for you. From now on, every time I turn my machine on, it is going to start with the 3.5 default setting. Sometimes you might be sewing on a project, a pretty lengthy one, and you get a certain stitch set the way you want it. Well, on a computerized machine, if, a lot of them, if you turn it off, it goes back the, to the default. So if you don't want it to go back, you need to click that. Now, what about when you're finished with that setting and you do want it to go back to the default? That button right there, looks like a page with a corner off of it, that will return you right to the default setting. Okay, we talked about these two buttons. This is your auto reverse and reinforcement. If you have that selected, then whenever you start sewing your seam, it is going to reverse a few stitches or reinforce a few stitches. And whenever you choose that one as well. That's your automatic cutter. So when you get finished with a seam, it's going to automatically cut it for you. Now, you can pick just the reverse, but you cannot pick just the cutter. If you click the cutter, it's going to turn both of them on. You have to have both, but you can always use the cutting button on your machine if you don't want that engaged. This button right here lets you change the, it lets you preview your stitch and it lets you change the color. That's going to be uh, handier when you're doing decorative stitches. Then let's look at the choices on this page, the very low right icon. This is going to be more pertinent to decorative stitches as well. This selection will let you mirror image a stitch if you want to. This selection will let you go back to the beginning, and this one will let you do just one figure of a motif stitch. So, like I said, it's really not um, anything to do with straight stitching. Okay, so looking at 1-5, that's a triple reinforcement stitch. It's going to sew three stitches right beside each other and that's handy for stretch fabrics or for something you really want a strong seam on. Then this stitch is what I call a lightning stitch, but they call it a stretch stitch. It's also for stretch fabrics. It's going to sew like here to here, kind of a weird shaped um, zigzag. That gives you a lot of stretch. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of the initial stitch screen and your automatic functions. A lot of these are just going to be, you know, the same for the rest of the stitches. But next we'll look at all the decorative stitches in some of your other pages.